I'm Marion Gray. This is my wife, Ruthie. We live at uh, 3529 Bixby Road, Groveport, Ohio. I'm not going to tell you how I met Ruthie, but I asked her to marry me on the very first date we had. Uh, I was in high school, and Ruthie was in high school. And I was watching her uh, play basketball at noon up on the elevated floor. I thought, man, she's the most awkward thing I ever did see, but she could make baskets. And uh, so I had three uh, brothers. <laughs> so uh, I said, boy, she's a beautiful girl. So I asked my sister, I was bashful, you know, <laughs> and I asked my sister to introduce me to her. Marion's sister, Katie, uh, we brought her lunch each day because we were the country kids, and we all the country kids ate together. And she said, you know, my brother would like to meet you. And I said, oh, that'd be fine. And she says, he sits behind you in the study hall. And uh, two days later, she said, well, did you meet Marion? And I said, no. She says, well, why? I said, well, I think I'll just wait. And she says, now, Ruthie, why? I said, well, does your brother wear heavy, thick glasses? And she said, no. And here, there was a guy sitting right behind me that I thought was Marion. So I wasn't interested in him, not because he had thick glasses, but because he paid too much attention to me. <laughs> well, then afterwards, uh, I went back and Katie says, he sits three seats behind you. I said, well, is he the black haired guy? She says, yeah, and he's got blue eyes. And I said, oh, you can introduce me. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> I broke a date, and she broke a date, and we went out. And uh, we to the were junior walking. senior prom. We were walking up the street in Logan, Ohio, and, and I turned around, and looked at her, and I said, "I love you. I'm. I want to marry you, just like that." But she had three brothers that put a stop to it. <laughs> you can tell them why. Well, my dad left a will when he died that all of us kids had to go through college. So Ralph said, Ruth, you've got to, you got to do that. And uh, yeah, I know if you think he's good enough to marry then, that'll be good, but you gotta go through college first. So that's what happened. So I waited, and I waited, and I waited. We almost didn't get married. Tell oh, me. we almost didn't get married. When we went down to the courthouse, it was about 11.30 and they closed at 12. And they wouldn't accept my blood test from Pennsylvania. I said, don't you close these doors till I get back. I went up to Fort Hayes and went into medical session and there was a sergeant there. I said, I need a blood test from Ohio. He wrote one and put a doctor's name on it and I was back about 10 minutes before they closed. But I had my blood test. I bet that guy thought it was the fastest blood test he ever did see. <laughs> we were married on April 3rd, 1943, week after I was on the Queen Elizabeth headed for Scotland. And I never saw Ruthie again till September the 27th, 1945. I landed in the first wave on June the 6th, 1944 with the 29th Division 116th Infantry Regiment. I was a combat medic, first class. It was the night before that I stood at the railing of a transport ship that was pushing through the water. Another soldier came up and stood beside me. I did not know him, and he did not know me. And overhead, we could hear our aircraft flying to distant targets. Unknown to us, but soon they would be flying into hellish gunfire. Little did we know that soon we would be heading into the same. Looking down from the railing, the phosphorus in the water sparkled like fireflies back home, calling to their mates. And all I could think of was my wife, Ruthie. It was like we were all in a theater waiting for the show to begin. There was no intermission. Our names were being called like a conductor on a plane. 
climbing down rope ladders to the landing craft was moving with the waves. We were a sea of young men heading into destiny. We rode the waves, and the tips of the waves would splash our faces as shells bursted all around. There was no turning back. The ramp went down, and there was those that jumped into the water never to see touch dry ground. And lying there upon the sand was the one that stood beside me at the railing, with a smile upon his face, as though to say, I have helped to set them free, still unknown to me, but known to God only. Last year, when I returned to the France, in a Couville Summer American Cemetery, as I walked along the crosses looking at the names, could one of them be the one that stood beside me at the rail? Out of 284 men in the company, only 12 could move forward. The rest of them was either killed or wounded. We were always trained, never go in as a group, spread out. So I spread out on my left, and uh, luckily I, bullets flying, but luckily they missed me until later on in the morning. <laughs> I was wounded twice that morning. I had used up all my servettes, and I was paralyzed in this left arm laying there. I can remember I crawled up on something, and uh, the guys jumped up, grabbed me the legs, and threw me down back of it for protection. I didn't even know I was hitting my left leg. He said, <coughs> you got blood coming out of your boat. Well, I didn't know whether it was blood or salt water. <laughs> it was something. I didn't talk about this, my experience, for over 50 years. I got back to my outfit on uh, July the 14th at St. Lowell. I was discharged the convenience of the government, and that's the first time that we had seen each other from the day we were married. And I got in just before midnight on Ruthie's birthday. This I will never forget. Oh, she hadn't changed. It was still Ruthie. <laughs> it was still Ruthie. Yeah. Yeah, he had changed a lot. Uh, he uh, he went in with black hair and came home with his hair streaked gray. He had uh, he had seen so much things that never bothered him before would bother him now that he was home. But the blessing was that. Um, that uh, we had each other, because that, that's what helped him. And since that time, she and I have had a wonderful life together. Even though we're both 91, we still had a wonderful life together. The second time I went back to Normandy, Jay and his father took me back that night on June the 6th. It was later in the evening. And uh, I was standing close to the flag, and uh, two attendants came up to me and said, uh, would you like to help us lower the flag, which I did. And they folded it up, and they handed the flag. And as I, as I held it, they played taps. How did I ever know that 65 years earlier, I would be holding a flag while taps was being played in remembrance of all my buddies. There's only two of us left out of my outfit today. It's hard to believe that I'm alive. <laughs> uh, someone was looking out after me. I think it was Ruthie. <laughs> Good Lord. 